Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. I hope nobody's tired of serendipity or unicorns and that sort of thing. But just in case you are, we are changing things up a little bit. We are looking at a book from a parent's magazine press, Fun Ways to Learning Book, a good manners story called Never Ask for a Gucci Bird by Catherine Marcus and illustrated by Irvine Metzel. How did you pronounce that again? This? Yeah. Gucci. When I first heard her say the name of this book, I heard Gucci. <laughs> no, not a purse. Yeah. Nice, simple illustrations. A prince, a prince little boy, I should say, just to clarify, and a bird. Ooh, smell that old book smell. <laughs> this is very, very old. It's gone through a few generations. Once there was a young prince who insisted on having everything he wanted. If he didn't get what he wanted, he sat down hard in the middle of the palace floor and howled very loud. Then the king and queen would call all the royal servants and command them, Get the prince what he wants. Yeah, very simple illustrations. Yeah, it's very pencil-like. This is part of the illustration here, right? Mm-hmm. Because there's these marks, like someone kind of took a crayon and went across the top and colored things in. Well, that possibly could have happened, <laughs> but it goes very much with... The rest of the style, yeah. Because it's only two colors. It's yellow and black. But one afternoon, the prince couldn't think of anything more to want. Such a terrible problem. In the morning, he had asked for 50 chocolate bars. He got them and ate them. Oh my god. At noon, he had asked for strawberry soda. He got that and drank it. In the afternoon, the young prince couldn't think of anything else he wanted. The art style, I have to say, looks very interesting. It's a combination of what looks to be ink and charcoal. That's how I would say it. Very possible. So he sat in the middle of the palace floor and thought hard. Then he had an idea. Uh -oh. I want, said the young prince loudly, a bird with a yellow beak, a tail like a monkey, and stripes like a zebra. Um, okay. You shall have it, my son, said the king. And he roared to the servants, Get the prince what he wants, and be quick about it, or I'll chop off your heads. Wow, brutal. Very quickly. And this is where taxidermy gets involved, right? <laughs> the servants hurried away. They traveled all over the kingdom, looking for a bird with a yellow beak, a tail like a monkey, and stripes like a zebra. Well, if they're traveling all over the kingdom, what was the prince asking for while they were gone? <laughs> we shall lose our heads, sighed the leader of the searching party. There just is no such bird. Oh, isn't there? said a voice. <laughs> the leader looked up. There, dangling upside down from a tree by his long brown tail, was a bird with a bright yellow beak and feathers that were striped black and white like a zebra. You may take me back to your prince, said the bird, but only because I want you to. You see, although the prince didn't know it, the creature he had described was a Gucci bird, and a Gucci bird can make its owner do anything it wants. Okay. The young prince was soon to find this out, and many other things besides. This is where the lessons are going to come in, folks. Mm-hmm. And this is where this would get very interesting if it wasn't a children's book. <laughs> oh, ow. Oh, I've been online too much. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's read the conditions one more time. A Gucci bird can make its owner do anything it wants. So now this bird is going to be in control of the prince of the kingdom. I see where you're going with that. When the Gucci bird was brought to the palace, the prince was delighted. 
He had it put into a big golden cage, and then he sat down to eat his dinner where he could watch the bird. It was an especially good dinner, with roast chicken and ice cream and chocolate cake. The prince had only taken one bite when the Gucci bird pointed a wing at him and said, I want that. No, I want that, said the prince. But there is no use arguing with the Gucci bird. The prince had to get up and carry his dinner over to the bird and put it on the perch. Interesting. The next morning, the prince set out to take a ride on his pony. I want a ride, said the Gucci bird, pointing his crooked claw at the pony. So the prince had to let him ride the royal pony. Interesting. This book is getting interesting. Every time the prince said he wanted something, the Gucci bird wanted it too. And the Gucci bird always got it. It's not fair, cried the young prince. I don't see why you should have everything you want. You had everything you wanted until I came, said the Gucci bird calmly. But that's different, cried the boy. I'm the prince. The prince became very angry. He called all the royal servants. Take that Gucci bird away, he shrieked. This must have been the cheapest colors of ink to print in. I'm thinking it's just a style because it's a yellow beaked bird. So it was easy just to keep those two colors. Yes, but it probably saved on printing costs as well. Mm. The king's men picked up the Gucci bird and carried it away to the deepest dungeon below the castle moat. That is a funny drawing there. Yeah, it's a little awkward. I think what's going on in this drawing is the fact that I think the artist used a human reference for the bird. That's where the bird looks kind of awkward in the shoulder area where the wings would attach. Mm -hmm. But the next morning, when the prince woke up, the Gucci bird was sitting at the foot of his bed. Okay. Also, I think they forgot to color in the beak there. Yeah, they did. I told them to take you away, howled the prince. I know, said the Gucci bird, but you wanted me, and you shall have me. Then he cocked his head and looked at the prince. This morning, said the Gucci bird, I want three pale pink apricots. But they grow only beyond the snow-covered mountains, said the prince. Oh well, I suppose I could send some of the royal servants for three pale pink apricots. Oh no, you couldn't, said the bird. You must go yourself. Of course, the prince had to go. It was very hard climbing the snow-covered mountains to get to the valley where the pale pink apricots grew. The prince felt very tired. This bird's there to definitely teach him manners. And this is definitely, it's like charcoal, but not charcoal. It's like two different pencils because we have these deep strokes here. And, but then we have these rough strokes. Maybe it's just the way he's holding the pencil or she's holding the pencil. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the yellow is much more paint-like. But when he arrived back at the palace with three pale pink apricots for the Gucci bird, he was pleased with himself. It's still just yellow and black, so the pale pink? Yes. Apricots are yellow. With black. The Gucci bird thought up other hard jobs for the prince to do, and the prince had to do them. He had to dive into the sea to get a pearl the size of the Gucci bird's eye. That's pretty dangerous there. Mm -hmm. Fish are friends, not food. Yes, there's a shark in the picture. And a jellyfish. And yeah. other fish. Yeah, you want to stay away from jellyfish. Very dangerous. Except for this one large one, but yeah, those are rare. He had to shoot through the sky to get a slice of the moon. Yeah, where does that moon and cheese thing... It's Apparently it's just Western. Because other cultures, like Japan, believes is a... Rabbit in the moon. Yes. Usagi, cough, cough. <laughs> the prince was so busy running errands for the Gucci bird that he forgot how to say, I want. I see where that's going. Then, one day, the prince's grandmother sent him a basket of fruit. The prince's eyes were big round O's as he looked at the bright red cherries and the beautiful oranges and pineapples. But this time... He didn't wait for the Gucci bird to say, I want that. First, he carried the basket to his mother and asked, Would you like some? Interesting. Oh, 
the Gucci bird sobbed sadly. I was having such a lovely time, and now it's all finished. What's wrong, said the prince. Can I help? Then he saw a strange thing happening. The Gucci bird's long monkey tail was shrinking, and the bright yellow beak was growing smaller, and the feathers striped like a zebra were falling out. No, said the Gucci bird. There's nothing you can do. It's just that I can stay only when you say, I want. But when you start giving people things, I begin to disappear. Oh, said the prince. The bird was getting smaller all the time. Well, I want... Yes, said the bird eagerly, and it stopped disappearing. I just want to thank you for coming, said the prince politely. You're welcome, sighed the bird, and it disappeared like a candle flame when you blow. There was only a little pile of black and white feathers left on the floor. The young prince gathered them up and put them in an ivory box so that he would never forget the Gucci bird. Ivory. Okay, that gives you an idea of how old this book is. Yeah. And he never did. Not even when he grew up and became the wise and good ruler of the kingdom. The end. It actually says the end. Okay, he could have also said, I want you to stay as a friend. Yes. Also, the only thing that's in color is the cover. The Gucci bird apparently is a lovely shade of blue with a monkey's backside, a yellow beak, and a gray top. The prince is sitting on a royal purple pillow. Mm -hmm. And the accents in his crown are also purple. The robe is the typical red with the white trimming with the black marking. He's a blonde, by the way, if you care. But that was probably obvious during the reading, considering the entire book is in black and yellow. Though, in most of the illustrations, his hair is not colored in. Yes, yeah, just the crown. Well, if both the crown and the hair were yellow, mm -hmm. it probably wouldn't come out very well. Overall, it's a nice book. What did you think? It's still fun, and they, they could hammer the lesson a little more strongly. I mean, it's right on the cover that it's a good manner story. Reminds me of... Oh, I don't remember what the books are called. The characters are round and all one color. I don't recall anything like that at all. They had odd names like Miss Manners and Miss... I don't think I've ever read or had those read to me. Mm -hmm. They weren't part of my collection, but I came across them in school. Hmm. And just to drive home how old this is, this is a hardcover book. And on the back, the price is $1. They're like 17 now. Yes. Oh, here I'm looking at the back cover and it has advertisements for other books. The most expensive books here are two ninety five. Good reader books. An elephant is not a cat. Yeah, that's, that's kind of obvious. But there are other books from the Fun Ways to Learning series that are listed. I don't know any of these. Uh, Lenny's 20 Pennies, Never Ask for a Gucci Bird, which we just read. Tell Me a Riddle. And Mike the Mailman and other, oh, is that Rebus or Rubus? Mm. R-E-B-U-S stories. It, it's amazing what you will notice as a kid. Even though this severely hammers a lesson into your head, didn't feel like that when I was a kid. Be nice. Ask for things politely. And also give things to others. Yes. Share and be courteous. That's kind of like one of the first lessons I picked up on. Like ever or just from this book? Like ever. Oh, this has been Never Ask for a Gucci Bird, A Good Manners Story by Catherine Marcuse, illustrated by Irvine Metzel. Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, share, leave a comment, check out other videos in Ember's Reading Room and or the Lux Analysis channel. We even have playlists built for you. You can check things out based on interest. If you would like a copy of this book, uh, look below for an Amazon link. We'll try to see if we can find it for you. If not, you can still go shopping at Amazon or shopping through Ebates. Uh, clicking those links helps support this channel. 
Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel.